Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Some people claim that the Bible promises land to the Israelites. We're going to examine that claim now and understand how it relates to Palestine. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. What does the Bible actually say about the promised land, Dr. Shabir? In Genesis chapter 12, God speaks to uh, Abraham and uh, uh, you know, tells him that, you know, he's uh, going to be blessed, his descendants are going to be blessed. In Genesis chapter 15, God promises him a swath of land, and this goes from the Wadi of Egypt all the way to the Euphrates. Uh, so this uh, is the beginning of many passages in the Bible which uh, uh, indicate that God promised uh, the people of Israel uh, a particular territory. And uh, that narrative feeds into the present-day conflicts. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Shabir, how are we to understand those narratives? Um, is it to be taken literally, figuratively? How does it work? How do you think, I imagine well, it works? There are, there are difficulties with taking it literally. Because uh, if you take it literally, then if you go from the Wadi of uh, Egypt, we're talking about the Nile River going all the way down to the, uh, across to the Euphrates, uh, which is located in what is present-day Iraq. So we're talking about parts of e Egypt, we're talking about uh, all of the Gulf countries, we're, you know, over uh, parts of Syria and uh, Iraq. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, that that does not seem very practical for for one nation to be uh, claiming this whole swath of land in in the present times. Uh, naturally, it's going to lead to a lot of conflict in the region. With uh, if anyone were to try and lay claim to all of that land, uh, so naturally people uh, tone down the. Uh, expectation and they speak of the promised land of being only Palestine. Um, but, but that too is problematic because uh, uh, the, uh, after the uh, Jewish revolt in the first uh, century, after Jesus on whom be peace uh, left the earth, and uh, then in about 70 CE, uh, the Romans came in and they destroyed the temple and uh, Jews basically were scattered. Uh, um, uh, you know, e even before that, there was a diaspora but even now, now it's uh, further. So uh, having uh, only a small surviving population of Jewry in, in Palestine, uh, it is difficult uh, in legal terms to say, okay, well, you know, we come back from Europe or wherever we are, or even America, and uh, now we are claiming this land because our ancestors possessed it 2,000 years before this. Hmm. So to, uh, to claim a land that your ancestors possessed 2,000 years ago, and, and you want to bolster that claim by referring to an ancient scripture, uh, this does not seem to fit our modern context of you know how land claims are settled usually one has the land claim based on a title deed and if one abandons one's land for some time and it's occupied by other people uh, then after occupying a land for some time you get legal claim to to the land hmm. this is just how the modern world works and this is a reasonable uh, way of doing things it's uh, hard hard to imagine that we will be honoring a claim of somebody who it had departed from a land, you know, for hundreds of years, and now comes back to to claim it. Uh, now, uh, the uh, th that's in the modern context, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But even in the in in the ancient context, if you were to think about uh, God promising the ancient Israelites this large swath of land. Uh, then you ask about the populations that live there already because the land was not unoccupied. One of the uh, most prominent uh, areas is referred to as the land of Canaan. Hmm. And why is it called the land of Canaan? Because the people called the Canaanites already live there. And mm -hmm. the land of Canaan seems to almost de facto uh, indicate that it is their land. It's mm -hmm. the land of the Canaanites. Uh, so what's going to happen to the Canaanites? Are the Jews going to move in there? I mean, I'm talking about the ancient Israelites now. Um, uh, so are the ancient Israelites uh, were just going to move in there and live in harmony with the Canaanites? No, according to the narrative, uh, they were to go in there and uh, kill off the Canaanites and take their land. God is giving them this command. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it turns out that it's not only the Canaanites, but uh, many nations are, are mentioned as uh, being in these lands which are um, said to be the promised land. Uh, seven nations at least are mentioned as uh, having been wiped out 
um, by the ancient Israelites and, and their lands taken over, all of this uh, at the command of God. Now, some may say, well, you know, this only is in the Old Testament, but in the Old Test in the New Testament as well, uh, Paul refers to the seven nations that have been uh, wiped out, and he uh, has no qualms uh, about that from the narrative, if we can judge from the narrative itself. Uh, so to think of God now coming to a people and saying to them, okay, you know what, you are my chosen people, uh, it, and, and I'm giving you this land, and you are to go in there and wipe out all the people, take away their land. Um, uh, you know, if we imagine ourselves uh, being transported back to the scene, well, it's hard to know how exactly <laughs> we would have uh, reacted uh, in those times, right? But with our modern mindset, uh, we can hardly imagine uh, that that we would find this palatable at all. Like, I mean, uh, God telling us, go kill all those people and take their land. If, if God were to give us such a commandment today, how might we react uh, today. So to, to settle the land claim based on the idea that uh, God gave us the land um, is uh, problematic in a modern context um, in terms of the modern of the land claim at the moment. And uh, it is also problematic from the point of view of the narrative, trying to uh, think of how this happened in history mm -hmm. and whether this narrative can be taken literally today. This is why most uh, readers of the Bible don't take these narratives literally. Okay, they they think these narratives to be composed by um, Jews in exile in about uh, the sixth uh, century, and and even later in the fourth, uh, fifth century, uh, after the Jews returned from the Babylonian exile, when uh, the books of the Torah were finally compiled, uh, albeit from uh, you know some historical narrative, some memory, some uh, myth and folklore from you know handed down through the generations, ancient lore uh, that eventually were compiled into the books that, as we have them now. And, and it is the Israelite nationalistic history that is being told here in these narratives. Mm -hmm. And of course, it is all, often said that the history is written by the victors. In, in this case, it's not necessarily the victors, but uh, it is you know, one people celebrating uh, out of national pride uh, a story about how they came to uh, possess uh, the land in uh, at a certain time in history, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. If, uh, and of course, there's, there's another question about like the Israelites, and if the Israelites are comparable to the people who are currently living in Israel right now, or who set up the state of Israel. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, because uh, a lot of people who um, uh, are arguing for you know the Jewish state. Uh, are not necessarily religious. Um, there is a, a you know a, a funny saying almost that uh, you know some people don't believe in God, but they believe that God gave them the land. Mm. Uh, so uh, you know some people uh, who are not necessarily religious are arguing for the um, Jewish state for secular and practical and political uh, reasons. And of course, uh, no, no, nobody wants to see anybody killed, whether Jew, Muslim, or or anyone else. And uh, after Jews have suffered so um, intensely uh, on, in Nazi, uh, you know, in Nazi Germany, uh, everybody wanted to see that the Jews can be safe and uh, can be repatriated somewhere where they will live in peace. Mm -hmm, so whether mm -hmm. it be uh, somewhere in Africa or somewhere in South Africa or you know, eventually uh, there in Palestine. So. Um, you know, that part, of course, uh, whether Muslim, Jew or Christian, anybody can uh, be satisfied. Yes, we need a safe place for Jews and everyone else to, to live. It's just so unfortunate that uh, the solution that was arrived at eventually meant uh, the displacement of Arabs uh, in Palestine and the enduring conflict that uh, has now culminated in this um, inhumane war uh, that is inflicted on the innocent Gazan population with 25,000 killed, uh, most of them being women and children, about 
percent of them. Uh, so uh, we need to sometimes go back to the roots of these uh, conflicts and uh, and help people to understand why they should not take such narratives uh, in a literal way. Uh, and to the extent that those uh, li the literal reading of those narratives uh, is contributing to the killing of Gazans today, we can only hope that some people will turn away from the literal reading and render less support uh, to the, the, the massive uh, uh, inhumanity that is being inflicted upon the Gazans. Beautifully said, Dr. Shabir. Thank you. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. We have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, Let the Quran Speak has been on TV screens and social media for 22 years. We've been reaching people all around the world, spreading positivity and good, and helping people experience the beauty of Islam and the accomplishments of Muslims. We've been shooting in this very space for the past two decades. And now, with the help of Allah, we're about to get the keys to Muslim Media Hub. If you like what we're doing, you're going to love Muslim Media Hub even more. Because it's the next step up. Think new TV shows, podcasts, social media content, and film. It will have new talent, more youth, and a lot more space and resources to do what we love. Spread the message of Allah. Our Muslim Media Hub costs $2.4 million. And for that, we need to raise $300,000. Please give whatever you can. Every dollar counts. It's our collective responsibility to share the message of Islam with our fellow human beings. Please help establish Muslim Media Hub so we can do this. It's a sadaqah jariya, something that will continue to be of benefit to the Muslim community long after we are gone. Thank you, and may Allah bless you and your loved ones today and always. Assalamu alaikum.